The first game for this month is Duskers, an early access sci-fi roguelike. A lone survivor, all you have left is a computer interface. Through it, you navigate drones into abandoned spaceships looking for answers and a way out. It seems you're all alone, but that can change quickly. Suspenseful. I'm not sure what else needs to be said about this game other than the title, Half-Line Miami. It's a game that combines Half-Life with Hotline Miami. It is ridiculous, but also surprisingly fun. Sadly, we fear it may be the closest we ever get to Half-Life 3. We still haven't got around to all the Ludum Dari 33 efforts. The one we have played is Daniel Linson's Death of a Lich. The game is a turn-based roguelike in which you drop down to the next level in an attempt to get a jump on your opponents. It plays out a lot like Crypt of the Necrodancer. So if you like that, you'll probably like this too. You don't have to like baseball. Heck, we're Australians, we don't even know how to play baseball. It doesn't really matter. This game loses the complexities of the sport and instead unearths the fun at the heart of it. Also, if you look close enough, it's just as much satirical as it is silly. Now on PC, there's a good cause to hit up the ballpark. The subversive Ed McMillan has teamed up with his buddy James Id to make the odd detective game Fingered. With a set of four clues, you must assess the case and point out who done it. There is amusement to be had in the art and chuckles in the language along the way. All up, it is some yummy $2 finger food. Oli Oli 2 Hollywood is the new, better version of last year's indie skating hit. Developers Roll7 have been busy since then, also pumping out Not A Hero, and number one game this May. What's enthralling about Oli Oli is how well it executes its simple idea. Controls and handling are difficultly intricate, but tight and frame perfect. The setups of levels require memorization and specific movements, but aren't impossible. It's hard but fair, with success boiling down to skill. It's enthralling because it keeps you on the edge of glory, wanting to play again because you know you can get an even higher score. It just takes one adjustment, one perfect run. This sequel adds a considerable amount of new features. The best of these are four player local, new tricks with an emphasis on grinding, new locales and spawn on beats. Ink has splatooned into our lives with a platforming experience that's just as vibrant as its colours. In Splatoon and De Blob, we've seen paint as a means to cover and take control of territory. In Ink, paint still splashes out of the character, but for another purpose. The world is invisible, like a blank canvas if you will. By coating it with paint, the platforms become visible. Sliding on the ground is like stroking it with a brush. Every jump in the air or squashing of a foe spurts paint out and lights up the surroundings. The action is quick. Enemies charge without hesitation and projectiles fire from all directions. The cube protagonist is agile however, and it is poetic watching it wall jump and dodge around all of the danger. Ink is by no means easy, but with its innovation, colour and its bouncy action, it is most certainly worth the effort. Have you ever wanted to hack? Perhaps to expose the injustices of the world. Perhaps you've been too scared of the consequences, like being virtually imprisoned in a South American embassy. Well, to anyone who said yes, fear no more. Hacknet is here and it lets you indulge in the joys of hacking within the safety of a simulation. The hacking is dead serious. The game takes place exclusively on a computer screen, with only codes and files to stimulate your eyes. You crack encoded files, bypass firewalls, and have to work in limited timeframes. What really keeps the game ticking is the story. You receive instructions from a recently deceased hacker. The media reported his death as an accident, but as you hack you uncover what really happened. The intrigue propels you to keep hacking away. It's definitely not a game for the impatient or casual gamer, but Hacknet provides a dedicated hacking experience for an equally dedicated audience. Uh, hi, it's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. 
I know we covered Shadowrun Hong Kong in our January Kickstarter video, and eight months later, it's already out. That's not to say it's been a rushed development. Aside from a few launch bugs, the game is top notch. Evidently, the product of a team that has already made two standalone games in the series. The fans, pivotal in Shadowrun's revival via crowdfunding, have been mostly warm in reception. Appreciation has been given to the Hong Kong setting, deep plot and change-ups to combat. Whilst criticism has focused on how the game doesn't live up to or improve upon the earlier entries. For those new to Shadowrun, the game is a CRPG. It has a large and text-heavy story that, if invested in, can be very rewarding. Combat is turn-based and features your very own crew. Ultimately, given all the expectations it has to live up to, Shadowrun Hong Kong does an admirable job and thrives on its unique eastern setting. This is the right solution. Our number one indie game for August 2015 is Volume. You may ask what it is, what makes it so good? Those are all valid questions, but if you want to find the answers, you'll have to wait for our next video in which we'll take an in-depth look at volume. Until then, thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former. I've decided to make a choice about